function is all the roads. I've been an exercise professional for now 37 years and I've seen lots of things come and stay and things that come and go. And at the moment, the big rage is functional exercises and functional training. There are even businesses based on that term. But let's have a look at what functional really means. Let's dissect it and analyze it and see what it actually is. Functional basically means that it's specific or related to a specific outcome whether that to be a sport, an occupation, <clears throat> or a life activity. So yes, in essence, it is very practical and makes common sense. But what you find a lot of the time, people say this is a functional exercise, and you look at it and you go, well, that doesn't look very functional. At all. It looks weird and it looks very complicated and it's very hard and difficult, but I can't see how that's gonna benefit my life. And ultimately, that's what it has to do. It has to benefit your life or your goal, whether it be a sporting goal, whether it be a, a rehabilitation goal, whether it be an occupational goal, whether it be a life goal. So it has to be directly related to that and to, in a way, be measurable if, if possible. So let's look at some things to consider and some questions to ask when people say, this is a functional exercise. So I'm going to go through some really obvious ones first. First of all, when you look at it, does it make you go, hmm, that looks weird? Generally, if it looks weird, it probably is weird. And it looks weird because you cannot relate to it. You've never seen that movement pattern before. You've never seen that position before. You've never seen that movement speed before. You think, well, and if that is what it does to you, then it probably, good chance, is not necessarily functional. Have a think about that. When you see it, you say, hey, is that, that is a position, a movement, a movement pattern, a speed that I do in my sport, in my occupation, or in my life. Yes, it looks difficult and it looks complicated and it looks very specific to something which I can't actually relate to. So if it looks sort of weird, then it probably is and it probably doesn't fit into the functional uh, framework. If it, for example, looks you know, dangerous, you go, oh, geez, just looking at that makes me hurt, or just looking at that gives me pain, then it probably is, is dangerous. There's a, a good clue. So if it looks, uh, it puts the body in an awkward position, puts the joints in a hyperextended position, or a bed position, or a rotation position that is not related to what you do in a day, or what you do in your sport, or what you... And if it looks like, wow, that looks pretty stressful in the body, then it probably is. And stress in that awkward way will actually lead to, to injury. So if it looks dangerous, it probably is. I'm not saying it's not or it is, but it probably is. So let's go, I mean, there's some just good broad brush uh, observations of functional exercises. If it looks weird, if it looks dangerous. If it looks really complicated, then, you, you know, then it's because you can't relate to it. It means therefore it's not related to an outcome, therefore you can't join those dots because that, that dot is completely unrelated to that dot. If it looks like, yeah, of course, if you look at it and go, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll do that because I can see how that would benefit me, then it makes common sense. So does it pass the common sense rule. Now let's have a look at more, more detail. If you look at a functional exercise, and they say this is a functional exercise, whatever it might be, Ask yourself this question. First of all, what position does it put your body in? And is that position related to my sport or related to my outcome or related to my occupation or my life goal, whatever it might be, from a functional point of view? So if my sport is in the upright position, for example, whether it be football or boxing or hockey, and most sports are in the upright position, and the exercise gets you in the, on the ground or in some awkward position on the ground, whether it be on a, a ball or whether it be on a hanging from the ceiling on a rope, or you know, then you say, okay, wait a minute, that position is not related to the position that I have to perform or my sport or perform my occupation or perform my performance in life. So if it's in the, a position that is not the end result position, then you probably guess that it's not very functional. If it gets you hanging from the ceiling on ropes and stuff like that, and your sport is standing on your two feet and you're hanging from the ceiling like a, uh, uh, like a bat upside down or singing, swinging with the ropes, 
you could probably say, well, that's not really relatable or very functional from a position point of view. The next question to ask um, is, is the joints in the position that are related to my outcome? You know, so if I've got, I'm doing some exercise with weight above my head, but I'm a boxer punching here, then why would I put a weight above my head up here when my position is, is here? You know, if I'm uh, doing an exercise with my legs in, in the upright position uh, in my sport, then, and it gets my legs to do an awkward position that's unrelated to my sport, then I might go, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make a lot, a lot of sense in a joint position. So does it put your body in the correct position that's related to your outcome? Does it put your joints in a position that is related to your outcome? Now, you've got to be very careful there because the next one is really important. It may put your joints in that position, but does it overload your joints or hyper overload your joints to the, to the degree that could cause damage to your joints. So let me use this example. If you're a sports person, such as a swimmer, and you swim, and I'm obviously not a swimmer, it's been a long time since I swam, and you swim like this, and yes, that puts my body, my shoulder in an awkward position of abduction, media rotation, and that's, you know, that's going to cause impingement on my shoulder and that's a, also an unstable joint because it has a very shallow cavity because it's a ball and socket joint because it's made for mobility not stability therefore it's not really designed for really heavy loads particularly in this position where you put your shoulder into an impingement position uh, that is obviously uh, increases the chances of you know, tendonitis on your supraspinatus uh, tendon which is one of your rotator cuff muscles. So if you're an athlete and you're doing this all the time, you've already got this repetitive nature going through the joint that's causing wear and tear. And if you now say, hey, we need to do a functional exercise that is related to that movement, let's get dumbbells in the gym and do this, and we put a heavy load at the end of a long lever that increases the stresses on the joint, and I use it in an accelerative way with repetition, so now I've got low, which is more than the load that I do in the gym. I put my joint in an unstable position. I've got a long lever with a load of the end of the lever that puts even excessive stress across the joint and I use an acceleration. Then you could say, yes, it ticks the boxes of being specific to the sport, but sport-specific exercises can lead to sport-specific injuries. Or better put, sport-specific exercise will accelerate sport-specific injuries because all sports will have certain injuries that are related to that biomechanical movement, that repetitive nature of that sport. And then trying to identically replicate that movement in the gym with a load will actually put extra load, extra accelerate the stresses on that joint that are already being sort of, you know, uh, put on the joint in the sport and you're accelerating it in the gym. And that's probably the last thing the joint needs because when you injure the joint, you can't work the muscles. What's interesting is that most sports, all sports, will have sport-specific injuries related to the movement pattern that that sport forces the body to do. So then if you take that movement pattern and you put it in the gym and you accentuate that movement pattern with a load, with an acceleration, uh, on top of what the body's already experiencing in the gym, uh, on the field or in the pool or on the court, then what you're going to actually be doing is accelerating what's happening in their sport. You're accelerating the sport-specific injury. When really what you want to do is to train the muscles and the joints in a safe position, get them strong, get them recovered, get them stable, so they can perform these less safe movements in their sport or occupational life so they can handle the repetitive strain, they will recover faster, not accelerate the injury faster. So sport-specific exercises lead to sport-specific injuries or increases sport-specific injuries. A lot of really complicated functional exercise will not only are they functional, but they actually go past functional and become dysfunctional and accelerate the injuries that are related to that actual function. If you're a runner, there's going to be lots of injuries related to long distance running, such as runner's knee or patellar tendonitis or patellofemoral syndrome. 
you know, or just osteoarthritis in the joints. And if you get an egg on the gym, hey, what I need to do is I need to get big heavy dumbbells, hop on the treadmill and run with big heavy dumbbells and put a big barbell on my back and run with a big barbell because I need it to be specific to running. Then what I'm doing is I'm actually accelerating the stresses on the knee joint specific to the movement pattern that's already been uh, bombarded with repetitive strain, putting in the gym, not only doing more, more repetitive strain, I'm actually loading it up even more so, uh, that's going to increase or accelerate the chances of the injuries related to the sport. So what I do, what's better to do in the gym is, okay, let's train those muscles and those joints in the movement pattern in a safe, controlled way so that don't accelerate the stresses on the joints, take the stress off the joints in a controlled movement pattern. And that's where you may do controlled squats or lunges with a controlled weight in a progressive manner with a controlled movement with good technique and perfect form. So that way I'm going to make all the muscles that are related to the running stronger and let them recover without stressing the joint. So then those muscles are going to be stronger to support the joint while you're actually in the running pattern. But if I try to replicate that running pattern in the gym with weights, then I'm actually going to just accelerate the injury. And you can do that with all sports, you know, if you're swimming with heavy loads. If I'm a boxer and I'm strained for repetitive strain injuries in the shoulder joint and shoulder impingement and biceps tendonitis, then I start getting big dumbbells and I start pumping this in the gym, then I'm actually accelerating the stresses that I experience in my sport. I'm better off going to the gym and doing a controlled push up or dip in the controlled movement pattern where I can control the load, I can control the speed, I can control the stability to make the joints and the muscles and the tendons and the ligaments more stable and strong. So when I get back onto the, in, in the boxing ring, they're all strong to withstand the repetitive nature and the acceleration and the stresses that are related to that particular sport. So be very careful where you have extremes. You can go completely, you know, they're not functional movement patterns where they're completely unrelated to the sport or the activity or the occupation where they're dysfunctional. Then you can go up to functional, closer to functional, but if you go beyond that, you can actually go into dysfunction where the exercise is actually so extreme, so he requires so much stability, so much complication, it's actually dysfunctional. If I start training my legs by standing on fit boards, for example, and doing squats, I say, this is really functional. But really it's not, because the life is not about on a fit board. The earth is not that unstable. I mean, some of us might be unstable in other ways, but if I'm an athlete, I don't have to learn how to stand on a ball of air, because the earth is not made of air. And I'm actually making it not just functional, but I'm actually making it dysfunctional by making it so complicated and so unstable, it's beyond stable. Sometimes it's too stable, then it's specific stable to the sport, then it's actually dysstable because it's beyond stable, where the ball is makes the earth is, is, is silly. And someone asked me once, being a martial artist, do you practice things on balls? I said, no, because when I do my martial arts, I'm not fighting on a ball. And that would give me a skill which is unrelated. Yes, it's a great party trick or a circus trick or a seal balancing the board trick, but it's not going to be help me in my sport because it's in the other end of dysfunction. Dysfunction where it's so basic, it's not functional. Then you have it so complicated, it's not functional. So you have to make sure whether it be functional or specific to activity, that the movement pattern doesn't look weird. It looks <clears throat> it doesn't it doesn't look dangerous it's not identical to the movement pattern of the outcome because probably the movement pattern whether it be sporting action is a fairly dysfunctional movement anyway or an unstable movement or an unsafe movement such as throwing a baseball taking your shoulder right back here and throwing your shoulder like a slingshot all these sports will have shoulder injuries if i'm a, a uh, you know, a, a, a footballer, I have football injuries. If I'm a tennis player, I have tennis injuries. If, if someone says I'm a netball, I think, well, how are your knees? And said, well, well, there's a good question. Let me tell you about my knees. Well, let's get the muscles around the knees strong in a controlled manner so you can withstand the forces of netball. Let's try not to replicate the forces of the netball in the gym and exaggerate away by putting loads on it, jumping off boxes, swinging off ropes and 
standing on boards and all sorts of stuff because now you're actually going into dysfunction range and sometimes it becomes so specific but more than specific with loads and repetition and stresses it will actually counter be counterproductive and can backfire on you because it would actually injure you because it's accelerating what's already happening on the court and because you're trying to replicate the movement uh, in the gym. So make sure it's not weird, make sure it doesn't look unsafe, make sure the body position is specific to the outcome. Yeah? Why would I hop in the ground? What parts of life do I hop in the ground? Maybe if you're a lizard and you need to go and do one of those plank things, you know, the planks, people do that for their abdominals, but the abdominals, how do they, what, are the, what is the function of the abdominals to stabilize the lower back and the pelvis in what position? The upright position. So why would I do an exercise in, on the ground in the uh, horizontal position where those muscles work in the vertical position. If I'm going to train those muscles specific to function, I'll train them in the upright position. A good simple exercise might be squats or lunges because I really had to activate my abdominals to stabilize my pelvis and my lower back to provide a good platform so my legs can express force in that squatting or lunging or deadlifting position. My abs will work specific to the interaction with all the other joints and all the other muscles as they do in life rather than hopping on the ground doing a plank and imitating a frozen lizard. Maybe you might do exercises my for sports such as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling on the ground or judo and, that, and then they are specific but make sure that you don't load them up that causes further damage to those joints that are susceptible uh, to injure anyway. So make sure the position makes common sense. Make sure the joint position makes common sense. If the exercise has me swinging weights up here, then I think, well, what part of my occupation or my sport is, my, is, uh, is up here, which is an unstable position. If I want to dislocate the shoulder joint, simple. Abduct it, lateral rotate it, and that's the best position to dislocate your shoulder joint because it's the most unstable position in the shoulder. If I want to impinge it, medial rotate it, and I'll cause shoulder impingement. And the same applies with all the other joints, you know, hyperextension, or you're looking at you know, shearing forces across the knee or certain exercises. So from a joint point of view, can you see is the joint stable in a stable, strong position to do the exercise, or is it in an unstable position, and then load it up in an unstable position with a long lever, the load of the end of the lever, and hey, maybe if we, let's swing it and do an acceleration movement and call that functional. What part of swinging weight above your head is actually functional? So is the joint position and the joint movement related to the outcome? And if you put all those into play, then you be able to answer those questions yourself. And with any exercise, you say, why are we doing this? And how does this work? And how is that related to the outcome that I want? And if it doesn't tickle those boxes, then maybe it's not that functional. It could be a waste of time. It could actually eventually hurt you and injure you, which is counterproductive because it's actually created the opposite result than what you wanted.